for Team USA, something we haven't said in a handful of games. 27-point win over Argentina in the medal round, the first game of the medal round. So the Americans advance to the semifinals. And remember, their last three games, they had won by a combined 16 points, so a much more convincing win. Argentina did beat USA back in 2004 in the Olympic semifinals, but no such luck. Americans remain undefeated out there in Rio. They've now won 74 straight, one shy of the Team USA record. We'll have full reaction. Michael Leaves will join us live from Rio in just a bit. Yeah, so his attorney, Jeffrey Ostro, telling me today, uh, emphatically supporting Ryan Lochte and saying the story that Ryan told to Brazilian authorities, the State Department, the FBI, and USOC officials on Sunday night, the same story Ostro says he told the Today Show is absolutely the truth. Um, going as far as to say uh, Ryan is the victim here, no matter what they're saying down there, let's remember he was the one who was robbed at gunpoint. What are some ramifications if it is proven that he and the others did happen to provide any false information to police? Yeah, so Lindsay, we know the beginning of the story and we know the end. The, the piece we're missing is the middle. And if somehow it can be proven that, in fact, uh, you know, Ryan and, and, and Jimmy Fagan were fabricating part of the story, uh, it could be one to three months in jail, although more than likely what I'm told by Brazilian people is that it would be just a fine. Okay. I mean, they did say that they, they were worried about getting in trouble. Any more elaboration to that on why they would think that that would be the case? No, they haven't. And, and everybody is, is super tight-lipped down here, which makes you really wonder what's going on. You know, it's been suggested to me as well that, you know, perhaps it isn't so much any sort of punishment that the Brazilian authorities are, are after, but a change in the, in the PR of the story, if you will. Let's remember, when this came out on Sunday, it was, it was a black eye in the Brazilian games that an American superstar was in this sort of a situation. And so if they can prove somehow that it wasn't true, I think there's belief here in Brazil that that will sort of help uh, somewhat save the face of these complicated games. All right, Wayne Dre is in Rio. Thank you, Wayne. Top five has really been forced on us by Usain Bolt yes. and Michael Phelps. The two Olympic titans were just going nuts right now. So we've crafted our top five. Yes. Together again, greatest Olympians ever. And I go. I'm going to start right away with uh, this Soviet gymnast, Larissa Latina. Latina. Yeah. That, yeah. By the way, that's what Olympic venues looked like back in the 50s mm -hmm. and 60s when Larissa was doing her thing. Oh, so elegant. Yes. She uh, won 14 individual medals, Kerry. 14 wow. individual medals. Wow. Wow. All around twice, 56 and 60. Uh, you know who this guy is? Uh, no, I do not. That's the flying fin, Pavo Nermi. Wow. Pavo. David, you went back. Well, I went way back. Nine gold medals. On one day, he won the 5,000, took an hour break, and then won the 1,500. Wow. Who made that schedule? And he ran with a stopwatch in his hand just to make sure. Just because. Number three, the man, Jesse yes. Owens. Yes. 1936, Berlin. Thumbed his nose and ate off Hitler up in the box. Won the 100, the 200, the long jump part of the 1 by 400 relay. Did his level best to ruin the Nazi Olympics. Number two, uh -huh, so here's guy. the big debate. Is, uh -huh. it, is it Bolt or is it Phelps? Uh -huh. I went with Usain Bolt, although, as I was saying earlier, there's no one in sports I'd rather watch do anything than but Usain him. Bolt yeah. running those, those last 50 meters. Just yeah. unbelievable. But I went with Phelps because yeah. of all, all the medals, the 28 and all, 23 gold, yada, yada, yada. I, I just felt like this guy's still splashing around at the age of 31. He gets my nod. Yeah, and that is going to be the constant debate. Who is the better Olympian? Is it... Is it going to be Bolt? Is it going to be Phelps? It's it's subjective, I think. Yep. I mean, the way Bomani made a good case for it. He but did. Here's my top five. I'm completely out of the loop here. Your, mine are all off, but here we go. Number five, Carl Lewis. Yep. You remember that guy? Won four golds in the 1984 Olympics right in Los Angeles. Hello. Uh, but when will LA get the Olympics again? That's another story. We'll talk about that. That's not in this top five. Uh, coming in at number four, Larissa Latina. Did we get a correct? A lot of Yeah. You know, well, listen. Our judge will be able to give our judge will be able to give us the right name on that for sure. I'm, all right, she, 14 individuals, as David just said, and coming in at number three for me. So this is where we do our back and forth. I went with Michael Phelps. Like I absolutely three. agree. Phelps at three. To me, one, two, and three are all the same, and I'll tell you why. Like he's. I mean, come on. I could argue that he's a top Olympian. I mean, I really could. But number two for me was Usain Bolt. 
You got both over? Yeah, I, okay. I can flip and I can flop, but I'm going to go with number one for Jesse Owens because of the conditions, what he had to deal with, what he did at that time. And I felt like, to me, when you are running under, you're, there's always this pressure, right, at number one, but you're running under these racist conditions, and it was hard. I couldn't even imagine what he had to deal with, but yet he pressed on and was able to get four gold medals in spite of. And so to me, I put it in perspective. It paved the way for the Usain Bolts and the Michael Phelps and everyone else. So that was my top five. It's a well-constructed argument. I have no complaints with it. Uh, here we go. Our top five back-to-back. -back. <laughs> Harry went Jesse Owens, Usain Bolt, Michael Phelps. I went Michael Phelps, Usain Bolt, Jesse Owens. I do all the same. Pavo Nermi thrown in on the side. Oh, yeah. Carl Lewis, yeah. yada, yada. So. Who we have here? We got Frank All Caliendo right. as our guest critiquer. There it is. What, do you, what your thoughts on the top fives, Frank? Well, uh, I thought we'd do a little Morgan Freeman oh, to okay. figure out <laughs> what's the best way to possibly do it. Uh, but I, I don't know if you mentioned that, that I was going to be on the uh, fantasy football thing oh, that's coming up, too. Yes, oh, you're going to get to that. Yeah. Frank <laughs> trying to plug himself for not giving all He's the producing anchors the their show turn now. to do what they need to do. <laughs> See, that was just terrible. Now was going Charles Barkley. It's never your top five lists are knuckle-headed lists. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Very, very good, but mm -hmm. in a way kind of average. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. Calendar, what it did was mm -hmm. just stole what you said. So here we go. Who do we we're, have? We're gonna take a look at number five of the greatest athletes of all time in the Olympics. I would have to say Larissa Latinia. <laughs> I'm not even sure how to say it. I just wanted to try and She's pronounce it. a lot of fun today. Name? I wasn't sure if that was the way to go. Uh-huh. Would you went with... Uh-huh. Never has a better name been for a man than Usain Bolt. And, of course, Sean O'Neill, table tennis. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's Ooh. a friend of mine. That's yeah, why I put him so like, I don't want to mark it. Michael Phelps, because we're on Sports Center. It's, you have to mention Michael Phelps uh -huh. and Jesse Owens, a man who ran in the most difficult position conditions of all time uh -huh, uh -huh. and came away with four gold medals and two world records. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Again, so, Sean O'Neill is, is He's a friend. Frank. He taught me how to play ta table tennis, taught me how to play ping pong. So Eddie Mitchell. Uh, no, no, no. no. Nah, the medals aren't important. It's not <laughs> It's not winning that's important at the it, Olympics. It's, not? it's participating. <laughs> I don't know where you guys what you guys are thinking. Yeah, Sean O'Neill, my bad. Where I am now is exactly how I want to finish. And by finish, he means start anew. Michael Phelps swearing off Tokyo, saying these Olympics are his last. The 31-year-old wants to chill with his three-month-old son, Boomer, marry his longtime girlfriend, Nicole, ready to expand his little family. No interest in extra hardware, because really, honestly, he has no place to put it. Our Wayne Drays caught up with the most decorated Olympian at the Crave Jerky event in Rio. You know, over the last 24 years of my career, it's kind of just little small stepping stones that were running through my head, kind of the last day, just because it, it's all coming to an end. This is it. Um, not going to swim competitively ever again. And, and uh, it felt good this time, because I think the last time I wanted it to just end quick. I wanted it to be over. And now I was actually enjoying it. When it was over, how did it feel different than it did four years ago, this goodbye? I think I was happy. I'm happy to, you know, happy to say goodbye. Happy to kind of leave and start something new or get ready to start something new. Um, you know, I think in, in London I wanted to kind of stiff arm it and just say, get out of my life, I don't want anything to do with you. Um, but now I think I was just kind of embracing the situation and, and everything that I had. Um, and this week, you know, there's... This week was crazy, you know, I mean, I could see Bob was kind of freaking out at the end of the week, you know, the double that I had with the 2, two IM Hunter Fly, he was freaking out. Uh, Hunter Fly final, obviously, he's excited, and then uh, the 400 medley relay, he was just, he was emotional the whole time. Um, so being able to share that moment, I think, is something that, that was super special for the both of us, because we were both finally there, uh, and both finally ready to move on. Tuesday night, you're in the ready room, semifinals of the 200 fly, and Chad starts shadow boxing. Honestly, what are you thinking? I saw it and was just like, okay, here we go. Um, 
I knew I knew media was going to ask about it. I, I without question knew it was going to get brought up, um, and I was just kind of just I don't I wasn't going out of my way to make dirty faces, um, but I kind of figured that I was probably going to have a face, and there was somebody that was going to capture it, and somebody was going to ask about it. Um, but I also, at the same line, like, like the same time, just know that we all have our own little rituals that we go through, and, and if that's his, that's his. Have you ever seen somebody get ready like that before? I can't, I can't say I have, no. Um, but I was just like, okay, to each their own. Do what you got to do. And so that night, you get back to your place in the village. Did you realize how your face had exploded on the internet? Well, I had friends who were sending me memes throughout that session afterwards, and uh, and then I got a photo of like emojis or bitmojis that are going all over the place. So it was it was kind of interesting. It's it's just I mean I guess after that it was that's when everything really started just going crazy back home. I I spoke to a friend a few days after that, and he was like, dude, it's just like it was in 2008. He's like, people were going absolutely bananas. Um, and then everybody started asking me to do the Michael Phelps face. I don't even know what I was doing. While some of your roommates and teammates are out till all hours of the night doing who knows what, what were you doing after these games different than the past? Uh, I was back here with uh, Boomer and Nicole asleep as fast as I could. That's a little different than the Olympics in the past. I was out till all hours of the morning uh, before. Um, I think it was, it's, it's crazy with the hours that we had for swimming, being so late. Um, so it was nice to just sleep as much as I could. I mean, I slept on the couch yesterday and it was just, I mean, I, felt, I, I woke up and I, I didn't know where I was. Like, I was just so, I'm just beat. I'm beat physically, emotionally, everything. You've had your personal issues after an Olympics or after a major meet. Yeah. What, what gives you the confidence that this will be different without swimming in your life? I think the biggest change now is, obviously I have a child. Um, I'm getting married this year. Uh, but also just, I'm just in a different place mentally. And, and, and I think that's one thing that, that I couldn't say in the past. You know, for me, I've gone through a couple bad spells in the last, you know, past two Olympics. And you know, here, I'm happy outside of the pool. I'm happy inside of the pool. I have a great family life. What do you want Boomer to take away from these games? I've heard that question before, and I, I don't 100% know right now. Um, you know, for me, it was, it was something special to have him here for my last swim. You know, I think that's something that, that you know, I always thought possibly could happen, but didn't know if it actually would. What do you want him to learn from your career? Nothing is perfect in life. Um, learn every step of the way. Uh, hard work, dedication, it does pay off. Um, just small things, and, and you know, I think Nicole and I will, will end up teaching other things along the way. Um, but also, I mean, he can also take whatever he wants off, you know, from my career, and, and I want him to be his own person. Um, you know, somebody's asking last night, is are we going to push him to be a swimmer? No. If he wants to be a swimmer, he'll be a swimmer. Um, that's one thing that I was very fortunate that my, my parents never did to me. Um, so, you know, Nicole and I will go through some of these, these processes together and learn new things, and, and hopefully we'll be able to um, instill in, into him some of the things that we learned as a kid.